Okay. Yeah, let me get rid of everything here. What are we doing tonight? Uh, well, I took a test today with the unit, so we're done with that unit. Um, mm -hmm. here, but looking, let me, looking let me in the volume up just a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Now I can hear you. So you're finished one section, you're on to the next. What are you doing now? Yeah, we finished that unit, um, but looking into like the book, what we're doing next is we're doing, we're graphing quadratics pro and their properties. Okay. Essentially. Go ahead and give me one and we'll go through graphing it. Uh, all right. So I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this, but this is just the next thing I'll learn. Like tomorrow we'll learn it, but okay. all right. So F parentheses and then X parentheses uh, equals 3X squared. Now, first of all, that is the same as y. In other words, you could have said y equals 3x squared, and it would mean the same exact thing. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right. If you're trying to plot that, what's the parent function? Uh... I don't know. Well, it's y equal x squared. Most of the functions they give you will be transformations of a parent function. You have to know your parent functions. There's about 10 of them. You have to know them, and you have to know what they look like on a graph. Well, that is what? It's a parabola. Like that. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's three times that, what does that mean? What is the three? Uh, what does the three represent? The um I don't know. <laughs> transformation. You gotta know your transformations. There are six of them. This is a vertical stretch, meaning that every point that would have been right there is now three times further away from the x-axis. Get it? Uh, sure. If this were the original point, the new point is there three times further away from the x-axis. Therefore, this three has the effect of making this parabola skinnier. Mm -hmm. What else you got? All right. Um, so here's another one. Uh, F parentheses x, so just y, I guess, no, equals... No, no, hold on a second. First of all, this is pronounced f of x. You don't need to say f parentheses x and parentheses. It's f of x. And what that means is we have a function, and everything on the other side of that equal sign is going to be an x. It's not going to be... R or T or Z is going to be X. So F of X is actually a little bit better than Y. Because when you put Y down, you don't know what the variable is on the other side. So this is a little stronger. It's called a little bit more robust. But it does mean what you're used to Y meaning. So you don't necessarily want to go backwards and call it y. You want to leave it f of x. Just understand that this is different notation, but it means the same as y, only it's a little better. Okay. What's f of x equal? Y. So what is f of 2 equal? Now hold on a second. 2y? 
f of x does not equal y. That is not what they gave you. What's the other side of the equation sign? Uh. In other words, it might be correct to say this, but you got to have something over there. What's over there? Oh, okay. Um, negative 2.5x squared. So, it might be correct to say that. But it's not correct to say f of x equals y. In other words, this is the function right here. f of x means we have a function. And that function is minus 2.5x squared. The fact that it's x matches that x, so we know it's correct. But it would never be correct to say f of x equals t squared. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. This tells you right there that the variable is going to be x. So the moment you told me f of x equal y couldn't be correct f of x has to equal something with a variable of x. Okay, now, same problem as we had last time. What's the parent function? Uh, x squared. How do I graph x squared? Well, I forgot. What's it called? Is it a straight line? Is it a parabola? Is it something else? Uh, it's a parabola. That is what x squared looks like. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have is not x squared. It's a transformation of x squared. And there's two things that are going on. There's this negative sign, and there's the 2.5. What's the negative sign do? Um, makes it go... To reflection. Way. Negative signs are reflections. They're either reflections about the x-axis, or they're reflections about the y-axis. You know what I mean by that? Uh, I think so. Okay, what would a reflection about the x-axis look like? Because that's what this is. That means a reflection, it's a vertical reflection. So I'm going to vertically reflect that over the x-axis. What would that look like? It would be the same thing, but like the other... Yeah, like that. Okay, good. Now... We also have a 2.5 that we have to take into consideration. What does the 2.5 do? Does that make that parabola skinnier, the blue parabola skinnier, or fatter? It makes it, um, it makes it skinnier? Yes, and here's how you can tell. If I had a point that was there, it's two and a half times further away from the x-axis. So that's the new point. If I had a point there, it's two and a half times further away from the x-axis. If I had a point there, it's two and a half times further away from the x-axis. What happens is when you connect those dots, you end up with a skinnier parabola. Mm-hmm. So this would match that function. It's been reflected over the x-axis, and it has been what they call vertically stretched. When you start with mm -hmm. a parabola like that, and it becomes like that, that's vertically stretched. If it becomes like this, that's vertically flattened or shrunk. So that's the difference in terminology. 
What else you got? All right. Um. Um. It says order each group of quadratic functions from widest to narrowest graph, and then uh, y y equals four x squared is the first one. Huh? And then the next one is y equals negative two x squared. And then the third one is y equals negative six x squared. All right. Plot that one in blue, that one in green, first one in red. And in yellow, what's the parent function on the first one? Uh, X squared. Yeah. Let me plot that in orange. That is y equal x squared. So, is 4x squared going to be skinnier or fatter? It's going to be fatter. Remember, a point right there, it's going to be four times further away. This is an important concept here. This is y equal x squared, okay? Here, let's do it over here. If y equal 2, what is y? If x equal 2, what is y? Wait, say it again? Okay, here's your function. If x equal 2, what is y? Uh, y equal 2, what? Plug it in. Plug x for equal 2 in. What's 2 squared? 4. Okay. That's of this function. Now, if I'm looking at 4x squared, if x equal 2, what is y? Uh, y equal I'm so confused right now. Well, let's get you unconfused. Okay, let's look at this function right there. If x equal 2, what is y? Plug it in. Plug in 2 for x. Figure out what y is. 4. No, it isn't. Plug in 2 for x. What's 2 squared? What? Okay, we're looking at the function y equal 4x squared. Right. If you plug in 2 for x, what do you get for y? Uh, 5. You get 4. What? What's 2 squared? 4. What's 4 times 4? 16. Then you get 16 for y. You get it? Uh, why would it be 16? Why would it be 16? Because you're plugging in 2 for x. So you have y equal 4 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, yeah, I, I think I get it now. Now you get it? Okay. If yeah. y equal, if x equal 3, what would y equal? Um... 18. What's 3 squared? 9. What's 4 times 9? 36. Okay, then it'll be way up there. 36. Okay. What you can see from this is you get a parabola that is much skinnier. In other words, whenever that is greater than 1, it makes the parabola skinnier. If it's between 0 and 1, it makes it fatter. Okay.
You can see how it made it skinnier, right? In other words, every point that was on the orange curve is now on the red curve. And if that point was 2, well, on the orange curve, it's 4. But on the red curve, it's 16. Mm -hmm. So if I connect all those dots on the red curve, I end up with a parabola that's a lot skinnier than my orange parabola. All right. I'm going to try to erase the red parabola, which is 4x squared. And now we're going to look at the next one. Okay, the next one is in blue. You got two different things happening. You got that negative sign and you got that 2. That's the only difference between the parent function, right? Mm -hmm. The parent function is y equal x squared, which is what I have graphed over here. y equal x squared. Okay. So we take these one at a time. What's the negative sign do? And you always take the negative sign first. The order does matter. You want to take your negative reflections first, always. Okay. So what's the, what would y equal negative x squared look like? It would look like the same, but like on the, below it, yeah, like that. Okay. Now you put a 2 in front of that. What's the effect? Um, Make the blue line skinny. skinnier or fatter? Skinner. Perfect. Skinny. Like that. Okay. It only makes it fatter if this number is between 0 and 1. In other words, if that was 1 half, it would make a fatter parabola. Okay. Okay. Now, y sub 2, the next one, the first effect does what? Or the first transformation, I should say? This is all about transformations. And this is kind of a hard subject, but we want to make sure you understand it. So if I'm looking at minus 6x squared, I have two things going on. I have a negative sign and I have a 6. What's the negative sign do? The negative sign makes it um like opposite. Like what's the six do? The six makes it skinnier. By a lot. Yeah, by a lot. In other words, really skinny. And what I mean by that is that how far away is that from the x axis? Well, I don't know, but I know that that's got to be six times further away. How far away is that from the x-axis? I don't know, but that's got to be six times further away. So that's why it makes it skinnier. You connect these dots, you get this very skinny parabola. Right. All right. What else you got? All right, let me find one. All right, um... So, uh, let's do this one, I guess. Okay. Um, fx. F of x. F of x. Uh, equals 5x squared minus 10. Good. That's a good one. What's the parent function? Uh, x squared. You got two things happening. You got that, and you got that. What's the 5 do? Oh, uh, the 5 makes it skinnier. By a factor of 5. Okay. What's the minus 10 do? It makes it, like, on the other side. No, it's a vertical shift, which makes it 
takes the blue graph and shifts it 10 units below. So that's minus 10. I didn't draw it quite right. Okay. I want to go over these because the best way to teach you this is going to be to do this. There are six possible transformations. Three vertical, three horizontal. You with me? Mm -hmm. This is the first vertical. What's that do? That makes it an opposite. Say that that reflects it over the x-axis. Because opposite okay. could be a reflection over the y-axis. Right. In other words, there's two different axes you can reflect over. When the negative sign is out front of the function, then it's a vertical reflection. You see why I call that a vertical reflection? Yeah. Because I got to flip it vertically. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. there are three vertical reflections. Or, excuse me, there's three vertical transformations and three horizontal. And it's best to learn them like that. Mm -hmm. If I have x equals or y equal x squared plus 2, that is outside the function, is it not? That is, yeah. Makes it a vertical shift. Mm -hmm. So, let's... A vertical shift means same exact shape, only shifted up vertically. Mm -hmm. I shifted it up exactly two units. Got that? Yep. Okay. There's one more vertical. What's that do? That makes it skinnier. Okay. And it, I'm starting with the blue. So I'm just going to make the blue only skinnier. Mm -hmm. All three of those are vertical. That one, that one, and that one. Now there's mm -hmm. three horizontal. I want to give you these. There's the parent. The first horizontal is where the negative sign is inside the function. Notice the difference. The other one was mm -hmm. minus x squared. This is minus x and parentheses squared. So here's my regular. What's minus x squared? That's a horizontal reflection. Because it's inside the function. Anything that is inside the function is horizontal. Anything that is outside the function is vertical. It's extremely important you memorize that. There are six transformations. Three of them are inside the function, horizontal, all of them. Three of them are outside the function, vertical, all of them. This is inside the function. What kind of reflection is that? A vertical... Nope. Inside the function. That makes it horizontal. What is a horizontal reflection here? It means I'm reflecting it over the y-axis. Well, it looks exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you did this math, you'd realize that's x squared. It is the same. Minus x quantity squared is x squared. Okay? There's another horizontal reflection where it's inside the function. Mm. Notice that's not outside the function, it's inside the function. That is a horizontal shift. And it's two units to the right, exactly the same shape. 
just like that. And the last horizontal shift is where it is inside the function like this. Mm -hmm. Remember, everything inside is horizontal, everything outside is vertical. That's a really, really key thing to memorize. So what is the effect of that three if it's horizontal? Uh, it would be a, it would make it skinnier. I understand why you said that. It's perfectly reasonable to expect that, but it's the opposite. When you're going horizontal and you have a number greater than one, makes it fatter. Fatter, okay. So it's opposite of what happens when you're dealing with vertical transformations. So you have three vertical, three horizontal. That's horizontal because it's inside the function. That's horizontal because it's inside the function. That's horizontal because it's inside the function. Now, before I leave this subject, and I realize I'm running you over time here, but here are three vertical reflections. Notice that that negative sign is outside the function. It's not in parentheses. So that's that. Mm -hmm. If I have this, that's outside the function, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the parent function vertically shifted by five. Same shape. I'm just moving everything up by five. And mm -hmm. finally, and I'll let you go with this, if I have it outside the function. That's outside the function because the two is not being squared. It's only the x that is being squared. The 2 is a multiplier outside the function. That makes it skinnier. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing vertical stretches, they get skinnier. When you're doing horizontal stretches, and it's a number greater than 1, it goes the other direction. It makes it fatter. So you have to distinguish between vertical and horizontal in all of these transformations. That is the most important thing, is first figure out whether you're looking at something that's a horizontal transformation or a vertical transformation. And since there's only three of each, it actually makes it easier to memorize. Mm -hmm. But you have to memorize it. Because every function they're going to give you is going to be either vertical or horizontal. If I gave you this function right here, what is that? First that of all, the parent function. Uh, e, X. E to the X. Yeah. Is that inside or outside the function? It's outside. Making it vertical or horizontal? Vertical. And it's a vertical shift. In other words, if e to the x looks like this, then e to the x plus 5 is exactly the same shape, up 5 units. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Blake, I apologize for taking you over but I, I felt like it's important. You gotta get these transformations mm -hmm. down. They're a big part of algebra. And just remember, yep. inside the function is horizontal, outside the function is vertical. Mm -hmm. That'll help you a lot. All right. All right. Have a good evening, I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, you too, have a good day.